In today's video, I'm gonna show you what it really is like living in the most dangerous city here in the Dominican Republic. And warning, some of you aren't going to like this perspective. But wait till you hear from this three-year resident of this city what it's really like like living there. What's up, everybody? My name's Jamie Gruber. I quit my high-paying job in the United States and moved here to the Dominican Republic with my family back in middle of 2022. And on this channel, I share my experiences of living my dream of being able to go anywhere in the world anytime I want as an entrepreneur. Now, I found this channel, Abroad with Jay, and I immediately had to reach out to this guy because I love, love, love his content. I'm going to show you a video of his. It's pretty short recently that he filmed talking about his experience living in a place where many people say it is just too dangerous to live. And oh boy, will I give you my thoughts. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about why I love Santo Domingo. Now, I know my perspective can be seen as subjective, and I know some people can and will see it different because there's so much to like about this island, and there's so many places for different types of people, so I'm okay with that. But I wanna share with you guys today why I love Santo Domingo. Now, Nice apartment, by the way, in Santo Domingo. Don't know the neighborhood he's in, and that's a little blurry right there on my screen. I don't know the neighborhood that he's in, but it's a really nice apartment, and I love some of his perspective. Watch this. Most people I talk to, they either love or hate Santo Domingo. There's no gray area, and it's for one or two reasons. Too many people, too much traffic. There's too many people here is one of the reasons I love it here. Now, I'm not in love with the traffic, but it's not a deal breaker for me. All right, this is an important distinction, okay? So he's saying he loves it there. A lot of people ask me like, what do you think? Punta Cana or Santo Domingo? And I always say, do you want city life or do you want more of a suburban life? That's really the big difference if you're moving here and looking to live in one of the two. If you like city life, oh my God. Oh my God, Santo Domingo. Now, for you Santiagans out there, I, I'm, I'm not hating on you. It's the second city here though. It's smaller, it's still a city but I think it's more attractive to people who are familiar or from that area because it's not on a beach. It's not close to a beach. You can drive 30, 40 minutes to a beach, but it's not that close. So Santo Domingo is definitely the city that's the busiest if you really enjoy kind of a urban setting. I don't work a nine to five here. I work at home, so there's no place I have to be at a certain time. I can leave my house whenever I want to to avoid the traffic. Now, don't get me wrong, there's traffic here all day long, but there are certain times during the day where it's not as congested. And you can get around the city, and I'm gonna put this in quotes, with ease. People ask me all the time, why do I love Santo Domingo? And I give them the same answer all the time, because there is no city on this island quite like Santo Domingo. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Santiagans. I'm sorry. On his behalf. I'm sorry. Now, some people may say Santiago, and I agree. Santiago comes second, but it's a far second place from Santo Domingo. Oh, he's about to get canceled. Santiago's out there. He's a tell, let him know down in the comments. Let him know. I always get it on my Instagram. Like, oh, you got to Santiago, Santiago, Santiago. And I haven't been. I gotta get there, but make sure he hears it. I'm sick of being the only one to hear it. Santo Domingo is the capital of the Dominican Republic and the largest city. It has about 4 million people here in this city, where the second largest city is Santiago with around about, I would say about one to one and a half million people. Yes, I've been to Santiago. I think Santiago is a beautiful city. It's really clean. It's nice, it has beautiful people, but I always come back to Santo Domingo. And even when me and my wife and my daughter, we travel around the islands and we go to places like Punta Cana, Las Terenas, Samana. Been to all of those, by the way? Cabarete, Harbor. Those two places too? Cool. After a while, even though I'm enjoying these places, but after a while, I'm ready to get back to Santo Domingo. So, why do I like Santo Domingo? The first reason is, and it's not in any particular order, is the fact that Santo Domingo is not a tourist city. Now, it does have its fair share of tourism, but it's nothing like Punta Cana, Puerto Plata, Las Terenas, Boca Chica, Harbacoa, and thank God, nothing like Sasu. <laughs> Thank God, nothing like Sasua. I wonder, I have to, I've got to meet him and I want to ask him why he said that. I have a feeling I know why. Maybe you know why. Drop it down below, but curious. One main tourist area here in Santo Domingo and that's Zona Colonial. And I try to avoid that place at all costs. 
I mean, it's almost like they can smell that you're a foreigner over there in that area. Where in the rest of the city, I fit in just like the locals. I'm not. You know, it's funny. Over in Zona Colonial, we went there recently, and it was a lot of fun. It is touristy, and it's great. I remember my kids played a pickup soccer game with some local kids, which was really cool to see. But we had a homeless guy that was like more aggressive than I've seen anywhere else. Not like he was going to physically do anything, but he was not giving up. Like he said, you can sniff. And again, my wife is who we approach first. Even though she's Dominican, he could sense like this isn't a Dominican from here or that grew up here or something. But he just wouldn't give up. He, he followed us into an ice cream shop uh, looking for money. And I would have given it to him, but I had zero cash on me. Zero. All I had was cards. Um, I was going to offer to buy him ice cream, but they like pushed him out. But definitely can sense if you're a tourist in Sona Colonia. Targeted to pay high prices because I'm a foreigner. I pay what's on the menu or on the price tag just like everybody else. This city is not catered to tourists, which makes living here normal now i want to make this point on punta Cana because i get the gringo tax all the time you may have seen me talk about that in other videos what's the gringo tax it's the idea that if you're not from here you're a gringo that the local vendors will charge you more yes maybe but more than anything like he said everywhere i go has a menu and they don't go like oh, 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 bring out the gringo menu same menu my wife gets the spanish one i actually ask for the spanish one now sometimes they just bring me the english one because i I look like this, but I'm paying those prices. Now, I do remember, I'll give you a quick story, going on the beach, my wife and I stayed at a Secrets for our anniversary. We just decided a little like staycation at a Secrets. How cool is that? But anyway, I forgot TMI to bring my underwear. I left them at home. 20 minute drive, I didn't wanna make it, didn't wanna drive over to Jumbo, which isn't too far. So we walked up the beach to this little like shop and they had a guy in there that was selling uh, boxer shorts, which I don't even wear boxer shorts, but whatever, I just wanted to buy two. He came out with a price of like 20 bucks US for each of them and I gave him the old, what are you, the New York, what's the matter with you? But anyway, I negotiated with him, right? So I just went to him and said, hey, look, man, I'll give you $5 for each. And he's like, no, I need more, whatever. Ended up getting like both for 15 probably still paid too much whatever that's the gringo tax stuff gringo tax is not going to a gas station and being charged more gringo tax is not going to a restaurant with a menu and being charged more so yes santo domingo is less tourist so there's probably less a chance that you run into the gringo tax but for those thinking about punta cana where i am or even cabarete or anywhere that i've gone if you're going to places that have stated prices grocery stores restaurants you're not paying a gringo tax the next reason as to why I love Santa Domingo is I like the vibe and the energy here. Now, I am from Alabama, but still, I was always this big city living type guy. I like the bright lights, I like the tall buildings, I like all the movement of a big city. Now, I'm not saying that Santa Domingo is an NYC or LA, but it definitely has that energy and that vibe of a big city. Most of the time when people think of Dominican Republic, they think of all-inclusive resorts, island life, but you don't get that here in Santo Domingo. What you get here is a beautiful concrete jungle, at least in some parts. The next reason why I like Santo Domingo is it's always something going on and it's always something to do here. Oh, that's no doubt. I remember spending some time there and my God, like traffic and all of that, but there was music going on out on the street until like three in the morning. It was a little annoying to be honest with you because we couldn't sleep, but there's all these different things going on. There's stuff happening in bookstores. I mean, if you're somebody with any means, and he's going to talk about that, by the way, he's going he's gonna to trigger you guys on means here in a moment. But if you're anybody with any level of means, there is a ton of stuff to do there. Even if you're not, there's great neighborhood stuff. But my point is people who watch this channel are not making $600 a month or $500 dollars a month they're doing well in the states and thinking hmm maybe i want to move to or move back to the dominican republic and if you are somebody that makes a decent living and can afford a lifestyle here then yeah there's a ton to do in santo domingo i'll give it that there it is endless listen there's never a dull moment here in this city no matter what day of the week it is if you're looking to get into something or do something it's happening you just have to find it Dominicans are always having fun and they're very social. So whether you're looking for an establishment to listen to live music, a nice bar for happy hours, or even a lounge to enjoy your cigar, and maybe you want to go to a car model for a cold president day, you can find that right here any day of the week in Santo Domingo. And in the next Helps him that he looks a little Dominican. When I go to Colmados, they notice reason why I love Santo Domingo is there's a lot of professional people living here in the city. 
from entry level professions all the way up to entrepreneurs and everyone else in between. Let check this out. I completely agree with this. In fact, there's a large uh, networking community called EO Entrepreneurs Organization. It's worldwide and they have a chapter here in DR and it's even, I think, centered right in Santo Domingo. So I get a call from the guy who founded Priceline. Yeah, that's right. I'm a baller. Not that big a baller, but I know the guy through my podcast. So Jeff Hoffman, billionaire founder of Priceline, calls me and says, hey, he doesn't sound like that, but hey, hey. I don't know why I can't get, that's like his voice now in my head. Hey, uh, I'm going to be in Santo Domingo speaking at this EO event. Do you want to come by? So I did. And I went down uh, to Santo Domingo. I met him at Blue Mall. I ate at SPG, which I love. And by the way, if you're looking at Punta Cana, it's like the exact same footprint. Blue Mall, SPG, Punta Cana, same thing. But anyway, I met him there and we had dinner. And then I walked him up to the conference room that he was doing this talk in. I didn't stay. I had to get going. But there were dozens, maybe hundreds of entrepreneurs, Dominican entrepreneurs there that do very very well they have businesses they run they run enterprises and all of that there was an amazing entrepreneur community inside of the dominican republic in general but in santo domingo in particular many who come here to live as a retiree i'm nowhere close to retiring i'm still chasing the bag so having an opportunity to be around or associate myself with like-minded people who are on the same intellectual level as me is very important while I'm living in this country. That is my take as well. I'm not retired. People think like, oh, this guy retired. He made a bunch of money and sold stuff. Like, I mean, I took a little money with me, but not as much as you think, right? Like I've built businesses along the way. I'm not out of the race. I'm not, I'm still a hustler. I'm still grinding. I mean, Christ, I'm making this content. I don't get paid a dime for this stuff, but I enjoy doing it and I see the potential of what I can do. Another business opportunity, but I'm a podcaster. I've got an event business. I've got a membership community. I've got a production company. I've got a real estate investing firm. I do a whole bunch of things, way too many. But like he said, being down here, I've met even in Punta Cana, a community of other entrepreneurs and high achievers that I can network and interact with, share stories with. It's not like, you know, it's not like you're surrounded by poverty in these places if you don't want to be. Plus, I love to see people who are more successful than me. It only fuels me to go harder and work harder so I can reach the highest level possible in my own life. When I'm riding down the street in the street on National and I see these G-Wagons, these Lambos, these Ferraris, these AMGs, BMWs, Teslas, man, I'm like, thinking to myself like hey you gotta get your weight up so the, my buddy walked into a dealer that same day i went to meet the billionaire jeff hoffman again baller <laughs> when i went to go meet him my buddy came with me because he had to get his car fixed uh a part for his car at a dealership he walks into this dealership and it was a it was a, a big one i think his car is a mercedes and in the dealership there were mclarens and ferraris and lamborghinis and all of that and the dealer there he asked him he's like you sell these he goes couple a day a couple a day gets sold in that city leads me to my next reason from having a lot of professional people here is i love the fact that opportunities to network are endless here since we've been living here we've met a lot of people during the last three years from politicians to self-made millionaires guys listen there's money in this country you can take that 400 dollars a month average salary shit somewhere else I don't want to hear it. Oh, I'm in love. If this is what I've been trying to say. There is a reality of poverty here. There is, absolutely. And there's the reality of prosperity. Now, I have already anticipate your comments because I love doing it because I've gotten them all on Instagram and then some. But somebody's going to say like, yeah, it's drug dealers and traffickers. And yeah, sure, I'm sure, I'm sure and I know for sure that some of the folks with money have gotten that money through less than legal means. Politicians are corrupt, but you're making it like it's unique to here. Have you ever looked at presidential net worths post presidency versus before Biden's an example. He's worth like $8 before he got into office. And then after his vice presidency, he's worth like 20 million. The only president that's actually, actually, actually ever gone backwards on net worth is Trump. Not endorsing the guy, but that's the only one. Obama's in like the hundreds of millions. I mean, most presidents, most politicians, Nancy Pelosi, 
Nancy is worth hundreds of millions today, and she's a lifetime politician. Somebody's going to defend her. I don't really care, but you get my point. There's corruption in politics. There's crime that creates money. There's laundering in every country. Yes, it's here, but there's also legitimate, a lot of legitimate business people here, people who have just done it. They've taken the dream and they've and they've they've elevated themselves. No doubt some of them are well connected and that is a big thing here. It helps way more here who you know than it does in the United States. I'll give you that. But there's money and prosperity here. It's important to know. And I love his point about this $400 a month thing. Like I don't know why that narrative keeps getting pushed. Like yes, we know. They're here and it's sad and you know, I wish we could pay they could make more and all of that. But there's 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 People who have and people who don't have everywhere, and that's just the example here. All that low vibration of shit, I hear people talking about, keep it to yourself. Yes, poverty is a reality of this country, and it seems like that's all people want to talk about, but that's not the total reality here. There's another- Who is sick of hearing about, oh, it's a poor third world country? Oh, the Dominican Republic's just this third world country. I'm sick of hearing it, and I live in it. I'm sure if you are from here, I'm not even from here originally, you're sick of hearing it. I love what he said, like, keep that low vibrational stuff out of here. This guy and I would jive. We got to hang out. But I think it's important to note the fact that he's right. Low vibrational energy is is cons consistently and continually reinforcing that there's poverty. The poverty rate in DR is 23%. 23%. It's a lot. That's a lot. I don't want it to be even 1%. But there's stats that people cite 80, 70, 90% are in poverty. No. 23%. There is a lower middle class, there is a middle middle class, there is an upper middle class, and then there is wealth. The vast majority of people in this country, they'll fall in those buckets, not in poverty. I'm not saying that if you're just above the poverty line, like, oh, wow, you're living the big deal, living the big dream, but you get my point. The poverty is about a quarter or less, 20 to 23% of the population, and it's been declining in the last couple of years. The middle class is growing. Food for thought. The reality, which is wealth and people are prospering. And that's something that no one wants to talk about. There is a segment of the population here that is doing absolutely well. And what people don't realize that there is a middle class here in Dominican Republic and it's growing. It's no different than in the United States. You have people here that are prospering and you have people here that are falling behind. And then to the end of time, there's always going to be winners and losers. That's just a fact of life, which leads what he just said. It's no different than the United States. There's winners, there's losers, there's people that are going to be left behind. There's people that are going to prosper. I always call it being born on the escalator of life. Some people are born like three steps from the top, right? And some people are born at the very bottom. And I've seen just as many people born at the bottom elevate to the top of the escalator as I have those born three steps from the top fall all the way back down to the bottom. I've seen them both ways. And that's the same thing here. Again, developing versus a developed nation like the United States. I'm not saying they're the same, but where there is similarity is there are haves and have nots and there are more haves than have nots here. There just are. Deal with it. Leads me to the last reason why I like Santo Domingo is there's a lot of restaurants and bars. And listen, I love to eat, so this is the perfect place for me. There are so many options to choose from. You can eat at a restaurant literally every day of the week for a whole year, and you still wouldn't come to have tried a fourth of the restaurant here in Santo Domingo because it's just that many. And it's not all Dominican food. They have a really large international culinary scene here too. Now, I know I just said that was my last. Now he's going to get to another one, but here's something with that. Piantini, I love that neighborhood. It's a higher end neighborhood, no doubt. But our one of our kids' doctors is in Piantini. And the restaurant scene there is really cool. Now it's not all, there's not a lot of traditional Dominican food. It's a little bit more foo-foo higher end restaurants, but even just in that community. And then we've gone to some other more neighborhood uh, kind of street food places, which are, I mean, <laughs> so good. Last reason why I love Santo Domingo, but it just dawned upon me I have another reason why I like Santo Domingo or love Santo Domingo. And I know some people are going to disagree and it's fine. But for me, this is the best city in this country to get your eyes on hard. The women are beautiful They're everywhere. I've never eyes on hard. I the paints a really funny image in my mind eyes on hard anybody of you ever heard that before i have not maybe a southern term he's from alabama and jay 
Okay. You said you're married, buddy. <laughs> but no, seriously, my wife's Dominican. I think his might be as well. And my wife is the most beautiful thing that's ever existed on the planet. That's bar none. That's not an opinion. That's just a fact. And the fact that she has these roots, Dominican roots, I mean, kissed by the sun, beautiful skin. I, I just... Huh. The, the most beautiful women are here, no doubt. My wife just happens to be the most beautiful woman. I'm going to leave it at that. So, these are my... Smart, Jay. For Mrs. Jay. Smart. Reasons why I love Santo Domingo. I'm sure there are more reasons why, because I really, really enjoy... What do you think? Drop it down below. Great video by Jay here. What are some reasons you might love Santo Domingo? Again, the most dangerous city in the in the country. The most dangerous city in the Dominican Republic. What are some things you love about it? Anything he missed? Drop it down below. Or, if you need to, if you need to point out why he's wrong, you can do that as well. It's perfectly fine. Just keep it respectful. Ah, uh, Keep it civil. Let's have a discussion. Point out things and experiences. Everybody has their own. But I just hate when people get just like nutty in the comments of anything. So whatever. You do what you got to do. If you're w wondering about uh, cost of living overall, I made a video right over here for you. You can click on that. Go take a look. I do a, a whole breakdown on cost of living, reacting to somebody else's video. Check that out. And until our next video, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe.